Welcome to Worship Today Online at Emmanuel United Methodist Church. My name is Ben Morris. I serve here as the pastor, and I'm so grateful that you have found us for worship today. Whether Emmanuel has been your church home for a long time, or you have found us for the first time, looking for a good word of hope from the God that loves you so much. We'd love to know who's with us in worship today. In the comments of our video on YouTube is a link to our website called a welcome card. It's just a way for folks to check in so that we can be in a relationship together. Also in those comments is another link to our website called a prayer card. If we can be in prayer for you this week, please let us know. Friends, we're in the second week of our Lenten series called Meeting Jesus at the Table. Each week during this time, we're hearing a, a table story about Jesus or from Jesus, a, a parable. Or last week, we heard the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000, breaking bread with people. We hear another story of not Jesus feeding people the how, but the who. In Matthew's Gospel, the ninth chapter, Jesus eating with tax collectors and how the religious authorities are not really a big fan of the company that Jesus keeps. But within that story, friends, we hear again the abounding grace of, that God has for us. I'm so glad you're with us today. God, we're so grateful for this word that you have for us in each of these table stories as we gather for worship today. Open our hearts and minds as we come to gather to listen for you in the music and in the Holy Scriptures. We give thanks for all that make this time possible, our music team, our editing team. Come Holy Spirit. We ask all of this in the name of Christ. Amen. Friends, thank you for all of the ways you share time and talent and financial gift through the ministries of Emmanuel Church. I'm so grateful that during this Lenten worship series, Meeting Jesus at the Table, we are meeting Jesus at the Table every week on our Wednesday nights, our Food for Thought Dinner Church here at Emmanuel. People are getting here early and earlier because they look forward to the fellowship of, of gathering around and seeing the people with our green name tags and greeting each other, fellowshipping, and having coffee. We greeted uh, several new people within the last week who have found us either on Facebook or we have some signs out now in the neighborhood, a banner on the corner of Meade and Washington, and a few yard signs throughout the neighborhood. All of these things are, are possible, being able to advertise and, and welcome new people and create fellowship, meeting Jesus at the table because of your support. Thank you so much, friends, for how you make these things possible through your time and your talent and your gifts. Whether you're with us in person from time to time and able to put gifts in the offering plate with us at Emmanuel Church, or you send gifts through the mail, I use our online giving, which is available through our website, emmanuel-umc.org, or there is an app, the Vanco Mobile app, which you can 
download for your tablets or your smartphones. And what I appreciate about our online giving is you can give directly to some of these ministries. You can give to our general offering. You can give to our building fund, paying down our debt from a few years ago to, to make the building handicap accessible. Or you can give directly to our Food for Thought Dinner Church Ministry to help pay for the food for these gatherings every week. Thank you so much, friends. Let us pray. God, we are so grateful for how you have blessed us so immensely and how we're able to return a portion of these blessings back to you through what you are doing through the ministries of Emmanuel Church. How we are able to be a part of what you're doing, offering our hearts and our hands and our gifts each week. We ask your continued blessings on these things that we might continue to see your son, the Christ, among us around the table. In his name we pray. Amen. Our reading of gospel this week is from Matthew, the ninth chapter. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when he had heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You don't want to sit there. It was tough to find a place to sit in the lunchroom my first year of high school. Not because I didn't know anyone. Quite the opposite. I grew up in a town of about a thousand people and had known many of the same kids in my class since kindergarten. We all knew each other really well. Now that high school had started, the social hierarchy was kind of restructuring once again into the selective pockets you all know, sports and cheerleaders and all of that. Looking back, it reminds me of the movie Mean Girls. But there was one group off in the distance that was different. There were these three juniors, two of them twins, sitting off by themselves. I hadn't really met them before. That's where the direction that I started to head as someone shouted towards me, you don't want to sit there. Everyone called them the garbles because no one could understand what they were saying. All the things they would talk about, it was like to others, they were speaking a different language. Well, as it happened, they spoke the same language that I did. They were the band nerds of the school. They loved theater and music, video games and Star Trek. No one else understood them, but I felt very much right at home. They welcomed me right away, and I did want to sit there. Who we sit with and where is such a big part of gathering at the table. It's important that we feel welcome and that space is created for others. That's an important part of our message, friends, as we continue our Lenten worship series, Meeting Jesus at the Table, in our Gospel from Matthew today. Our story today is from Matthew's Gospel, and it is about a, a man named Matthew being called by Jesus. A man named Matthew, a tax collector. A person that Jesus decided to join at the table. But those that saw Matthew, especially the religious authorities at the time, had questions as to why Jesus would choose him. Why does your teacher sit with tax collectors and sinners? You don't want to sit there. 
You see, friends, the role of the tax collector during the time of Jesus was a very complicated one. They collected taxes for the Roman Empire, the occupying force at the time. Rome would, of course, as the government, specify how much it expected to receive in tax revenue. But it was kind of understood that the various tax collectors along the way weren't honest about how much they were giving to Rome and how much they were keeping for themselves. They made their own little margin of profit. So tax collectors were widely seen as traitors to their own people. I know we like to give the IRS a bad time, but tax collectors during this time were truly the worst of the worst. They were social outcasts because they had aligned themselves with the enemy against their own people. And they were moral outcasts because of their greed, stealing from their neighbor to line their own pockets. Maybe they had nicer homes or clothes than other people in their own communities. You didn't acknowledge them walking by on the street. Their occupation was seen as such an evil that sometimes their own families would not speak to them. And most certainly, most certainly, they were not people that you went to dinner with. Why does your teacher sit with tax collectors and sinners? You don't want to sit there. But these are the people that Jesus wanted to sit with. He found Matthew, the tax collector, who was isolated from his people, from his family, from his friends, and said, follow me. And then he went to Matthew's house and ate with Matthew's friends. And I think we can assume, friends, that because Matthew was disowned by the community, that his friends were also tax collectors who had nowhere else to go, no families of their own. So Jesus, at the house of a tax collector, is with other people who are cast out, other tax collectors and sinners. Jesus did want to sit there. It's powerful that in this story with the tax collectors and sinners, as others are casting stones, that Jesus does not accuse or correct them. He does not criticize them. He does not demand that they repent of their ways. What he does do is he simply eats and he drinks with them. He passes the cup. He breaks the bread. He sits with those that are despised and rejected, demonstrating that no one, no one is beyond the reach of God's mercy. Why does your teacher sit with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus is criticized by the religious authorities, those who are concerned about obeying the law, about being with the right people and offering sacrifices in the right way. But Jesus rebukes them by quoting the prophet Hosea, saying, I desire mercy not sacrifice. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. There's a lot in that little phrase, friends, as Jesus is returning to a, a prophet from the Hebrew scriptures. And the Greek word for mercy, elion, has some important threads in its definitions, especially as it is imported to us from the Hebrew scriptures, from the work of the prophet. Some definitions, you know, suggest what we would expect to have mercy on or to have sympathy towards someone. But an important word in some of the definitions of this Greek word, ilion, is with. To feel sympathy with. To experience mercy 
with. Why does your teacher sit with tax collectors and sinners? To experience mercy with at the table. I appreciate the work of our author this week, Cynthia Foy, from our Bible study, Meeting Jesus at the Table, when she talks about the power of hospitality and what it can do, experiencing mercy with. As she writes, hospitality transforms all who are involved. Host and guest are impacted and changed by the relationships that are formed in the breaking and sharing of the bread. Inclusion wins. The wideness of God's mercy reaches out to those on whatever margins of society creates. That's from our Bible study, Meeting Jesus at the Table. If we want to be like Jesus, we experience mercy with. We do want to sit there. I was reading a story recently from Wilmington, North Carolina. It was about some folks who are not welcome. People that no one wanted to sit with. The city of Wilmington is in New Hanover County, which just passed an ordinance that criminalizes sleeping on county property. And as you might imagine, this has a huge impact on the homeless population of that area, saying where you can sleep and where you cannot if you don't have a place to sleep. Well, one man, Sean Hayes, is behind an effort to build a collection of what they call tiny houses or tiny homes. But Hayes is trying to do much more than help the homeless and, and give them a place when construction is complete for this group of tiny homes, it's called Eden Village. He'll be able to house over 30 homeless individuals as well as give them a sense of community and access to resources such as health care and, and education. He's trying to help people together experience mercy with. Hayes spoke about it more in a news report and how he's been getting to know people, heard their struggles. He said this, When you sit down and get to hear the person's story, you hear how resilient they are and how brave they are to have gone through whatever it is that they went through and that they're still living and that they're a survivor. You really get to put a human in the place where that word or stigma that is attached to homelessness is, and they become your friends. Powerful words, friends. Just the beginning of his phrase, when you sit down with people, the power of that. He is sitting down with those people that others don't want to sit down with. In fact, are creating laws to make those people disappear. He's trying to create community for those who feel isolated and trying to help those experience mercy for those who has, have, have come to call his friends. Something different happens when we sit down together at the table. It is a place where we, we're all equal together, where we, we're all eye to eye. Hospitality transforms all who are involved. When we meet each other and offer a space at the table, Jesus meets us there as well. Again and again. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks as we continue to hear from you in this series and, and the power of this story in Jesus sitting with those at the table who were cast out, who were unwelcome, who were rejected by others. 
Help us find those places, God, in which you might be calling us to join Jesus in those places. To see the face of Christ in those people among us. At the table, you meet us. And hospitality transforms all of us. Help us to find those moments. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Worship Online today at Emmanuel Church. So grateful that you could be with us. We're continuing the conversation from this Meeting Jesus at the Table worship series throughout the week and would love to have you with us. A few different opportunities to be in Lenten Bible study with us Tuesday evenings on Zoom. Folks from both churches are joining us. Wednesday afternoons, our friends at St. James have their Bible study at 2 p.m. And then Wednesday evenings here at Emmanuel Church after we have our, our meal together at about 6.15, 6.30-ish in the fireside room. We look forward to that and hope that you might be able to join us as we go forth. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. <laughs>